Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamualaikum Pakistan. Uh, we are moving forward. We have talked about uh, so many different forms uh, of uh, the uh, aspects of unethical behavior. And uh, initially, we also talked about uh, a term which was voicelessness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about voicelessness, then this particular word has many connotations, many dimensions, many perspectives, many dynamics, and also many repercussions and many consequences all around it. It seems to be a very simple word, voice, voicelessness. Now, if we look at the seven habits of effective people, which is one of the world's bestseller books, then there is also an eighth habit. And uh, when we talk about the eighth habit, then that eighth habit is voice, having a voice, whereby you can communicate, whereby you can explain, whereby uh, you can convince, whereby you can negotiate, whereby you can resolve, whereby you can impress others or other shareholders or stakeholders through your voice. How can we make our voice resonate? How can we? make it optimize? How can we reverberate it? How can we make its impact greater? Are all the habits of voice and the eighth habit. Now, let's go out of that. And this was a book that I would like you to read. The eighth habit uh, is a, a very important book, which is about a voice. And what is the 180 degree difference in it? Voicelessness, not having a voice. Now, ladies and gentlemen, most of us think that we have a voice. We are talking, I'm talking right now to all of you, you're talking to each other, you're talking to people around you. And we usually see that now we have so many platforms. We have the normal way of physically meeting each other and having and discussions on the mobile phone, on social media, on the internet, on electronic media, on print media, and so many other ways of connectivity and having a voice. But despite so many platforms emerging, so many new ways and modes and mediums of communication becoming more vibrant and more popular, but yet there is so much of deprivation. Now, this deprivation emerges from voicelessness. Now, when we are going to be looking at voicelessness, there are many aspects to it and many dimensions to it, but we will try to keep it confined to just two particular dimensions today and see what is its impact on overall governance and also the welfare and the good of an institution. Now, when we look at that, ladies and the worst form of deprivation is voicelessness. It leads to spiritual, emotional and intellectual suffocation, wanting to speak but not able to, speaking but not being heard. So, ladies and gentlemen, the two dimensions that we are going to be looking at is, is that I want to say something, but I cannot. And the other one is, I am saying a lot, I am shouting, I am screaming, but no one is listening to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this has nothing to do with resources. This has nothing to do with status. This has nothing to do with the different physical aspects or physical resources that you have. It has nothing to do with your education. It is found in the elite, in the aristocracy, in the bourgeois, the middle class, and in the proletariat, which are the common people. Voicelessness is in many forms. I'll just share a few examples with you. Just imagine that you are a very influential person. You are super rich. You are very well connected, you know all the who's of who in the country and you had to go to a wedding outside of the city with your family and you are coming back late. And when you are coming back late in your 60 million fully loaded land cruiser, but because it was a fi family function, you did not take your guards and you are coming back and there is a police knocker at 3 a.m. And when you stop the vehicle, you see these haggard policemen with their weapons pointing to you and your family. And then one of them, sludging, 
and coming over to you and saying, put down your window. Now, you know the chief minister, you know the prime minister, you know the inspector general, you know all the ministers, you know all of the top hierarchy, all of the bureaucrats. But it's 3 a.m. And he says, put down the window. And you put down your window, basically praying that everything goes all right because you have your family with you. And when that gentleman starts talking, you, you can smell they see alcohol and you become more anxious and full of anxiety. And he says, get out of the vehicle. I want to search your vehicle. All your connections, all of your money, all of your ego, all of your position, whatever, is not going to work over here. You want to say something, but you cannot. Voicelessness. Look at the poor in our country. We have so much of poverty. All of these people are voiceless. They don't get fundamental needs. They don't get proper food or nutrition. They don't get proper clothing. They don't get a roof on their head, sleep on the footpath or in the different gardens or parks on the road, wherever they get some space, be it summers 50 degrees or winters minus 10 degrees, they don't have anywhere to go to. They're voiceless. No one cares about them. If politicians cared about them, if bureaucrats cared about them, their lives would have been better. But so much of money is being squandered. In a poor country like Pakistan, we see government officials cruising around in vehicles of 60, 70, 80, 100 million rupees while people are starving, while children are dying, while people don't have education, people don't have a roof on their head. Why? Why is that so? Why do you or why does someone have to use public money for a yashi or for squandering in luxuries when the majority of the country is basically deprived of basic necessities. Voicelessness. I go to a hospital and I don't get proper medical care. Voicelessness. I send my children to school where there's no good education. Voicelessness. I go to the court and I don't get justice. Justice delayed is justice denied. Voicelessness. I go to the police thana and no one listens to me. No one lodges my complaint. The FIR is something else. The police thana has a new SOP which is called cut. What is a cut? Why do the police have to decide? They have to investigate. No one listens to me. Voicelessness. I know that I have done everything right, I'm qualified, I should get a job. Jobs are on safarish. There's no merit in it. Voicelessness. We have a super elite. The bureaucracy. They can do anything. They can make black white and white black. But what about the other common people? voicelessness. All of these government officials should be serving the people of Pakistan, but they don't serve, they rule the people of Pakistan. Voicelessness. Why do we have voicelessness? Why is it that the breadbasket of Asia has a stunting rate of excess of 45%? We are compromising the future generations. Voicelessness. These things have to stop. And people have to realize that they should have a voice. What is happening in our households? Despite education, despite being economically stable, women are abused. 
they can't say anything voicelessness they are beaten they cannot share it with anyone people say stay quiet it's a family matter voicelessness they are verbally abused repeatedly voicelessness mentally they are suffocated kabhi saas bhi bahut hi voicelessness why why does it exist in our society why is it that when a boy is born people tend to celebrate and even in many educated families when a girl is born they say stay quiet don't congratulate voicelessness why is it that people cannot ask for their rights they want to but they cannot voicelessness suffocation this has to end this is bad governance be it corporate be it public be it social or be it household based voicelessness tends to psychologically damage people and deprive them of their sense of commitment and achievement and of excellence and like i mentioned to you it could be any part of the society and then there's the other one and that is i'm screaming i'm coming out with the words no one is listening to me what happened on the chalkod motorway that lady was raped in front of her kids voicelessness a lady was dragged in the streets of muzaffargarh voicelessness a lady doctor was killed in sindh interior sindh voicelessness what happened to our kids they were screaming no one was listening to them what happened to zanab what happened to mara what happened to all of these individuals why did no one listen to them why do we close our eyes to zulm to deprivation to rule off the law o double f why don't our courts give us justice voicelessness what type of society are we creating where is our society going where there is no rule of law where law is applied subjectively why the question is why and until we find the answers there is going to be voicelessness i want to say something i cannot and even worse i am screaming my head off and no one is listening this is the very sacrilege of society it tends to undermine and undermine households communities society institutions corporations nations it is important that we create channels of communication which can give voice to the problems of people be it society or be it institutions and then it is necessary to listen to those voices and find solutions in the best possible way so that there can be more equity there is no egalitarian society even if we believe in heaven and hell that is not egalitarian some people will go to hell some will go to heaven it's not egalitarian everyone is not equal so in this world maybe it is idealistic to want to have an egalitarian society but no we have to have an equitable and a compassionate society we have to have equitable and compassionate institutions where people listen and respond where people have values where people empathize and sympathize and do not have apathy to be indifferent because everything is okay with me why should i care about anyone else it is important that we do not have an antipathetic society where people enjoy the pain of other people i as an executive 
or someone with power and authority enjoy, have pleasure, have this sadistic tendency to give pain and discomfort to others for no reason at all. Just because I have a sick mind, I enjoy the pleasure of putting people in problems. Someone has a problem, wants to go to his village or her village. No, you can't go. There's a lot of work. Voicelessness, apathy and antipathy. Why is this all happening? It's a way of thinking. It can change. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I can change my today and my tomorrow. That is what is needed. Let us give a voice to each other so that we can all live a positive, healthy, constructive, compassionate and equitable life. Thank you so much.